Isn't this nice? This is nice, right? Well, I woke up this morning, actually yesterday morning, and this thing started blooming. This is, an, this is a newly blooming flower, and I wanted to speed up the process, so I put some coffee in it as well, trying to... Just kidding, really. I'm just kidding. But um, this is... I guess it's just called a friendship flower. I really don't know what kind of flower it is. It's just uh, it was given to us by a friend. And they said, this, this is a friendship flower. And it came with instructions. It came with this lovely pot. It came with three bulbs. That, uh, and it came with instructions about burying the bulbs like two-thirds of the way into the dirt. And then the instructions were like, you need to put it uh, for a couple of weeks into a dark room. And so we did that. And in that couple of weeks... I lost the instructions, so I have no idea what I'm doing at this point with this flower. But um, we pulled it out, and we've set it up on our counter. Uh, we did that about a week ago, and, um, and this is what we've got. And it started li- literally as just like those, their bulbs about this big, and from that we've got these three, um, I mean, these, aren't, these are struggling, but this one is blooming, and we've got these, this lovely friendship flower, and I don't know what it's going to look like in the end. I don't know if these get bigger or if it's more or whatever is going to happen with this, but I'm kind of excited. Um, but the fact that I've lost the instructions is a little uh, vexing to me because I'm like, I don't know how often to water it. I don't know if it needs a lot of sunlight or not a lot of sunlight. I don't know if it needs to remain in this pot forever or if it needs to be, you know, I don't know. But it seems to be healthy, right? I mean, it's, it's a healthy flower, at least... From my point of view, it's a healthy flower. Now, the way I know it's healthy is it's growing, right? I mean, it's growing. If it wasn't healthy, I'd guess it probably wouldn't be growing. I mean, this little guy right here, I don't know if you can see him, the little guy right here, I don't know if he's healthy or not. I mean, that's about as far as we've gotten. It's kind of turning brown a little bit at the tip of it. But this one seems to be doing all right, at least. I think the roots have uh, gotten dug deep into the dirt, and it's... If we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five flowers. It looks like maybe we'll get two more out of this thing. So it seems to be doing all right. It's healthy. And the way I know that it's healthy is it's growing. So healthy things grow, right? I mean, that's a basic principle of life that um, if you've been around for any amount of time on planet Earth, you know that healthy things grow. And, uh, and that is applied to things like plants, but it's also applied to, like, kids, right? If a kid is healthy, he's growing. Um, it's applied to uh, maybe, like, an organization. If an organization is healthy, it's growing unless, you know, whatever, it's meant to stay small. Um, but healthy things grow. It's just something that we apply to everything. Your hair is healthy when it's growing. Your fingernails are healthy when they're growing. And uh, people are healthy when they're growing. Now, there comes a certain point where growth might not be so good when it's more of growing sideways than tall. You understand? But we still apply the principle to life that healthy things grow. Um, And so Pastor Brian has been preaching powerfully on this matter of faith in the past month. Throughout 2016, uh, he's been driving in this idea of faith. And, And this is what he's been saying. If your faith is healthy it should be growing. Now, that principle can also be applied to one last thing, and I would say the church. If the church is healthy, it should be growing. And and you can say it's growing in all sorts of ways, growing numerically where we're getting more people here, growing spiritually where we have just a greater spiritual maturity in here, growing in wisdom and knowledge, and we just have like all these wise guys who are like writing books and articles and blogs and everything. You could say we're growing um, just in love, and it seems like the unity. So healthy churches grow in a number of different ways. And one specific way that Pastor Brian has been driving home is that healthy faith grows in a healthy church. Faith must continually grow in a healthy church. Now, I think we see this 
uh, already in our church. And I think just in 2016, we've been seeing a lot of things. In fact, just in this past week, I've been seeing it as I've been studying for this sermon. It's just like I'm seeing this amount of faith that's growing in our church. For instance, I talked about baby Roman Maxwell, who was uh, uh, burnt by that hot water, okay? It was posted on Facebook, and it was kind of late at night, and it was posted on Facebook, and like people are all of a sudden like sharing it and, and typing about the praying, and it's just like all these prayer warriors just like huddled up, and we're just like, we're praying this baby through this trauma right now. And so like all, this, all these people got together and started praying for baby Roman. It was awesome. I just loved it. Like I was just on Facebook, like watching it in real time. I'm just like praying, praying, praying. I'm here. I'm praying for. And someone went and visited at the hospital and was just taking care of the family. And it was just, it was really cool to just watch and see that happening. I shared the status too, by the way. I was a part of it, just in case you were wondering. So, um, but then we've also seen, like I've seen, you know, Jessica was sick this week, and someone just got word that she had been sick and brought a meal. Just like, you know, we didn't ask for it. No one said, hey, we need meals. It was just like, hey, I heard Jessica's sick. I want to bring some soup. And they brought soup. And uh, by the way, thank you. Um, um, and I'm just seeing like all these things happen um, with just these steps of faith. And while you're just like, okay, making soup isn't a huge step of faith. No, but it is still a step of faith, right? It's still a step of faith to make something, to take it over to someone who is hurting. It's a step of faith to, uh, you know, pray for the baby. And so I think our church has been seeing these steps of faith happening. In fact, I was just telling someone this morning, they were asking how the youth room is going with its whole renovation and everything. And I said, man, one of the coolest things about this whole project is not just the new room. It's like, oh, it's really cool. It's going to look so neat. It's not that. I think the coolest thing for me has been watching all these different people coming together, either donating money, donating their time and their work. Um, you know, people are making some big gifts uh, and sacrifices to this room. And it's just so cool to just like see people from this church like teaming up and saying, hey, we're going to get these teenagers a brand new room and they're going to love it and they're going to invite their friends to it. And we're going to see this room uh, just have a history of discipleship and they get excited about it. And I've loved being a part of it because I just, I just get to be like putting pieces together and someone says, hey, we want to give you this, we want to do this, we want to help with this. And I'm just like, I mean, it's so cool just seeing our church coming together and working just in even just these small projects. But it's really encouraging to me because what I'm seeing is faith growing. And I don't know if you've gotten to witness it yourself. Maybe you've seen it in your own life. Maybe you've seen it in someone you know in this church. But faith is growing in this church. So the Apostle Paul wrote in detail about what a healthy church looks like. In the passage we're getting ready to read, you can start turning to Ephesians chapter 4 if you'd like. In the passage we're about to read, he spells out for us what a healthy church looks like. But then he also tells us what an unhealthy church looks like, and it's a little uncomfortable. And then he tells us how we can increase the health of our church. And what I really think that this passage is for us is I think it's a glimpse of what Calvary Baptist Church could look like. I think he's painted the picture of a healthy church, an unhealthy church, and I think it's a glimpse of what we could be. And listen, my goal here this morning is not to tell you whether or not we're healthy or unhealthy. I'm not going to make that claim because the honest truth is if something is healthy, you know it. If that flower was brown and uh, petals falling down, you would know it's not healthy. But the fact that it's just green and blooming to life is very evident that this thing is healthy. So I'm not going to try to convince you that it's healthy. I'm not going to try to convince you that the church is healthy or unhealthy. I think you can make that call your, on your own. But um, Paul is writing here, Ephesians chapter 4, of what a healthy church looks like. So let's just go ahead and read the first seven verses, and we're just going to get an introduction to find out what he's talking about here. And uh, so verses 1 through 7, it's on the screen if you need it. You got your Bible? I've got mine right here. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you beg you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope 
of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What an awesome passage. I mean, Paul just, there are times where Paul's writing and you're just like, I mean, Paul must have been bored with some of the stuff he's writing because he's just like, some of it's boring, but then he, there's times where he's just like on fire and he's just like writing up a storm and you're just like, preach it, Paul, and he's on fire right here in this point. And he's just like, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. And it's just like, man, he's on fire right now. It's just exciting. So he's talking about this incredible unique and tangible bond within a church. When he's talking about one faith, one hope, one God, one church, one body, he's talking about this, this one thing that is bonding this church together. There is something, something tangible that is holding the body of Christ together. He tells us in verse 7, and to every one of us is given grace. We are given grace. Grace is that glue that is holding us together. And so if, if the church was a flower, okay, and I, I don't try to get too carried away with, with illustrations here because I think some people just like get so carried away with an illustration. It's like, dude, just stick with the Bible. But I, I want to give you this one picture. If the church was this flower, okay, then God's grace would be the soil in which it is planted, the life source, right? If the church was the flower, grace would be the soil, and healthy things grow. So it's only when the flower has its roots planted deeply, reaching deep into that soil, when the church is reaching deep into God's grace, then we are drawing life, then we are healthy, and then we start to see the health visibly. When we are digging deep. Now, if this flower did not have its roots dug deep, like I really don't think this one's got deep roots right now. And when the roots are just shallow or maybe they're just withdrawn or, or they're dead, whatever, when the roots don't go deep, the health suffers. The health of the church suffers when we've withdrawn ourselves from the grace of God. So digging deep as a healthy church, we draw our life from God's grace. Now, in the following verses of the passage that I just read, we're going to look at some more of the, of the following principles. Paul's going to paint two pictures for us. He's painted for us a picture of the healthy church and then a picture of the unhealthy church and what these two look like, what they look like in contrast and comparison, and then explains how we can increase the health of a church. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start digging into these things and figuring out what exactly is it that is, you know, making this flower healthy. What does a flower look like when it is healthy? What does a church look like when it is healthy? Okay, now listen. While the flower's purpose is just beauty, right? It's just so we can look at it, maybe smell it and say, wow, that's really nice. All right? While the flower's use kind of ends there, and some people might have medicinal purposes for flowers. I'm not that guy. But um, the church has a purpose, okay? We're not just to look at it and say, wow, that is a nice church. We are supposed to be on a mission here. And when the roots aren't going deep into God's grace, you understand that our growth is stunted, which means the mission is halted right? The church isn't just existing here so we can gather together and just look at each other and say, wow, what a great church. You look nice. I look nice. He looks nice. The music was nice. The preaching was nice. All right, let's go home. The church has a mission 24-7, okay? You go home, you're still on the mission, all right? But if our roots have not gone deep and, and our roots are shallow, our growth is stunted, which means the mission is halted. And so, Paul understands the importance of that, and I think Paul is now going to explain for us in verses 11 through 13 what this healthy church is going to look like, okay? So here it is. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> so he's painting here for us, and it's almost like it's almost like as he's talking, it's like we're getting one end of a conversation. We don't get to hear the other end. It's like he's answering some unheard questions. And I think just by looking at what he's saying, I think we can kind of gather what the questions are. So I went ahead and I just kind of figured what, what questions would Paul be answering in this conversation? All right, and so here's what I think it would be, okay? Someone must have asked him, hey, Paul, all right, I understand churches are meant to grow. They're meant to be healthy. So what did God give to the church to help it grow? What did God give to the church to help it grow? He gave it leaders. Leaders. It says he gave some apostles and prophets and, and then teachers. And Now, we can argue and debate about whether or not prophets and prophets exist. That's not the point right now. Okay, The point is God gave the church leaders to help it grow. Okay? Question number one, answer is leaders. Question number two, what are the leaders meant to do then? If God gave leaders to the church to help it grow, what is the role of a leader? And here it is right here. To equip the saints for ministry. To equip the saints. That's what it says in that, in that passage. For the perfecting of the saints, the maturing, the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Okay? So what, are the, what is the leader's job? To equip all y'all for the ministry. Okay? Question number three. To what extent is this supposed to happen? How, uh, how much are we supposed to be equipped? How much is the, are the leaders supposed to equip the members? To what extent? And the answer is, until we all reach maturity in unity and in knowledge of Jesus Christ. Until we all reach maturity, it says in verse 13, until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, mature man. Okay, so to what extent? Until we all reach maturity. Okay, so then what will happen when we've reached maturity? When we've accomplished that, what's going to happen when we've all uh, come in unity and in knowledge of Jesus Christ and we've matured together? What's going to be the end result? Verse 13 at the very end, unto, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of of Christ. Now, that's a little hard to understand. King James doesn't really make it easy for us in 21st century, but um, what it's saying is this, okay? Until we, the church, begin to reflect the body of Christ. Now, we are the body of Christ. We understand that. But it's getting real specific and real literal at this point. Okay, I think it's very literal when we talk about being the body of Christ. Now, if you're like, this is your first time in church, like ever, or if you're new to Christianity, we have a lot of words that are just confusing. Like when we talk about being washed in the blood, it sounds like an oxymoron. Like you don't get washed in blood, you wash blood off, right? So we have a lot of terminology, and this is another one of them. We are the body of Christ. It's like, I've told the teenager before, I don't know if any of you have any idea who Power Rangers are, but they all like join up together and like create this one giant robot thing. And that's what I always think of whenever I think of we are the body of Christ. That probably just went like probably under your heads. That's not over your heads. <laughs> it's like I always think of just like we're transforming into one giant. So when we say like we are one body, we are the body of Christ, it's like for some people who weren't raised in church, that's just weird terminology. And I think basically simplified, it means this, that the church is simply meant to live out the life of Christ. When Jesus was physically on earth, his body was being used to do certain things. His body taught people. He had a physical body that he used to teach. He had a physical body that he used to heal. He had a physical body that he used to pray. He had a physical body that he used to sacrifice. And so when we say that the church is the body of Christ, it's basically saying, yeah, we are supposed to just be doing what Jesus physically did when he was on earth. We are carrying on his ministry. And so we are the body of Christ. We are the hands and feet. We are the ones who are now praying. We are the ones who are now sacrificing, who are teaching, who are bringing healing to broken hearts. Right? So, whatever Jesus did, a healthy church will continue to do. That's what a healthy church does. It's the body of Christ. So the question is, well, is Calvary Baptist Church doing that? Praying? You know, bringing healing? Um, are we serving? Are we teaching? 
you might have your own answer. My answer is this, increasingly so. I think we're seeing Calvary Baptist Church increasingly reflecting Jesus Christ better and better. It's like a mirror that's just been dusted over, and we are wiping off the dust to better reflect the image of Christ to this world. I think we are increasingly becoming more and more like Christ in our conduct, in, the, in just our day-to-day, 24-7 life. I think we're beginning to see that more and more. We're beginning to see more faith. We're beginning to see roots deepen. We're beginning to see a better understanding of grace in the life of Calvary Baptist Church. So a healthy church is equipped. The members are equipped to do ministry. All right, The leaders are here to help you do ministry with the goal of maturing so that we can better reflect Jesus Christ to the world. And it all happens by deepening the roots of faith in the soil of God's grace. That's the picture of a healthy church. Deep roots in God's grace so that we are maturing in unity and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to the point where we are reflecting Jesus Christ to this world. But then he gets to this picture of an unhealthy church, and it's one verse. I don't think he wanted to spend a lot of time on it. I think Paul was like, yeah, this isn't a lot of fun, so let's just kind of get past this. So he gives us one verse, and it's verse 14. All right, so we're maturing so that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So one overarching characteristic of an unhealthy church is obviously immaturity. Immaturity. Now, Immaturity in all sorts of areas, right? Immaturity in the unity, right? Some churches struggle with unity. There's always the bickering, the gossip, the arguing, the drama. There's always that in an unhealthy church, okay? Immaturity in our faith, like people are uh, just unwilling to give, unwilling to serve, unwilling to sacrifice because there is an immaturity in their faith, okay? Immaturity in all sorts of ways, but I think he specifically mentions an immaturity in an understanding of God's grace. Now let me explain. An immaturity of understanding God's grace. He says it's basically like someone who is just tossed around by every wind, every breeze that comes its way. Like you're just like that plastic bag. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Just blown around in the wind, being tossed around by every single breeze that comes its way. It's not anchored down in God's grace. It has no roots that are holding it down. It is shallow and it is loose and it's just blowing around. Now, what are what are the unbiblical and and this kind of alludes to the fact that this is like there is appealing doctrines out there that are very unbiblical. He says he calls it the craftiness, the slight of men, these guys who come in and they just bring these appealing but very unbiblical doctrines into churches. And you see it in a lot of churches. I mean, you just got to go on TV and just watch like some of those preachers just like, man, what is he saying right now? And yet his church is huge. And it's because this unbiblical teaching can be very appealing, right? When you start to take out any sort of idea of a sacrifice, like sacrificing money or service, it's like, that's not the real appealing teaching of Christianity. So let's remove that. Let's replace it with something else. Right? So there is appealing teachings going on in many churches today that are very unbiblical. Now, I think we have a mature church, and Pastor Brian does a fantastic job. He is committed to kicking out all of that unbiblical false doctrine. And, and I respect him for committing himself purely to preaching God's word. Okay, And that's what Calvary is all about. We stick to God's word. We're not going to try to twist anybody's arm. We're not going to try to use the appeal uh, factor of trying to get more people in. We're sticking with God's word, and we're not going to go beyond it to try to appeal to people because it's unbiblical, right? Now, we are a mature church here, I think, in that we understand when we hear something that is unbiblical yet very appealing. We understand it. When we hear things like the prosperity gospel, right? The prosperity gospel is just simply, man, if you give this, then God's going to give you this. It's like there's no promise in Scripture like that, where if you give $10, he's going to give you 100 right? I, it doesn't work that way, and yet there are preachers who give that because it's appealing, and people are like, yeah, here's my money. And so we understand some of those things, okay? 
But I think there are some that are very crafty, some unbiblical beliefs that are so appealing and crafty and sly that they often go unnoticed. And I think there are three specifically for Calvary Baptist Church, and, and you know, I'm sure there's plenty, and that doesn't, this doesn't necessarily mean every single person, because I think we, see, uh, we are seeing an increase of faith in this church, and so this is increasingly being kicked out, these three unbiblical yet appealing beliefs. But here are they. Um, number one, this appealing yet unbiblical belief, I think, in Calvary Baptist Church is that only the pastor does the ministering. Only the pastor does the ministering, right? It's like he can't go to every single hospital visit, right? But I praise the Lord that man, when baby Roman went to the hospital, Pastor Brian was already heading out of town, but um, someone was able to go there and minister to the family. That was fantastic, all right? That is Calvary Baptist Church recognizing that the pastor isn't the only one who does the ministering. Okay? But we've got to be real careful with that. This isn't like, this isn't like hey, um, I don't got time to do this, so I pay him to do my ministry for me. Right? And no one outright thinks that. Like, well, I can't go visit the homeless, and I can't, you know, feed people, so I'm just going to pay Pastor Brian to go do that for me. Right? He doesn't draw a salary just so that he can do the ministry you can't or don't want to do. Right? That's not his job. His job isn't to do your ministry. You know what his job is? is to equip you to do the ministry. That's his job. To help you, to lead you into doing the ministry God has called you to do. Right? So, and, and by the way, I think verses 11 and 12, I've already discussed that, shatter that belief. That God gave leaders for the purpose of equipping members to do the ministry. Uh, appealing but unbiblical belief, number two, only those blessed financially should give. <laughs> this is always a touchy one, and I'm not going to linger on this one just because it is too touchy, and I don't want to dig myself. But Brian, Pastor Brian, um, is so gracious about this, okay? And we don't make any efforts to uh, hide any of the numbers, the budget. Like, I personally type the budget onto, and the giving onto the back of the bulletin. I don't know if you've ever seen the numbers on the back of the bulletin. We're not hiding what we make. We're not hiding what uh, the church receives in an offering on any given week, all right? We're not hiding that. And so, you are able to see uh, what is given every single week. We're not hiding it from you. And I think Pastor Brian has been much more gracious than many pastors would be or have been, um, with this belief that seems to be kind of filtering into uh, Calvary Baptist Church that, man, missing one week isn't going to hurt. Someone else will pick up the slack. Someone else with more money and a bigger tithe is going to be able to pick up what I'm not giving. Um, and listen, I mean, Scripture is pretty clear about this one, that we're all in this together. A person who comes in here and, and just is thinking, what can this church give me? Um, is a consumer. I mean, and, and we're not a business where we're dealing with consumers here. We're a church where we're dealing with family members who are all in this together, okay? And we've got to get it out of our brains and out of Calvary Baptist Church that only those blessed financially should be the ones giving the money, okay? This is all of us working together. Number three, only the skilled can serve. Only the skilled can serve. Um, and, and I'm seeing less and less of this, and praise the Lord. I mean, especially with the whole youth room thing, I'm seeing people come up and do some work, and it's just like, it's awesome. But I'm afraid that many churches, and, and if we're not careful, we can be this way where we kind of present the idea that if you want to serve, you have to be up here, right? And it just like excludes every single introvert in this entire building, right? Because, um, listen, if you want to serve, this is like, this is like, you know, this is like 10% of Pastor Brian's actual ministry of being up here, right? The other 90% is him like studying, praying, counseling, visiting, and, and leading, and shepherding. And like, this isn't like the ministry, okay? If you want to serve, listen, I mean, there's a world out there, right? And, if, and we've, we've kind of, you know, figured out you can serve in our church, you can serve in our city, you can serve in our world, and we've got places where you can serve. And, and let me just tell you, okay? Because people are believing that only the skilled can serve, all right, we have volunteers who are getting burned out. 
We have volunteers who are getting burned out. And, and the reason is just because it's like, man, we don't have anybody else. We just need you in there again this week, or we need you to go back again. We need you to do double duty. We need you to uh, do this again. And we've got people burning out. It's a kind of uh, old saying that 20% of the people do 80% of the work, right? Have you ever heard that? 20% of the people do 80% of the work. I don't know if it's true. I don't know how accurate it is, whatever. But the, but the point remains that serving is not just for the skilled. Serving is for the Christian, right? If you're in this room, if you're a part of Calvary Baptist Church, it is commanded and it is expected that you're going to be serving, and you guys know, ask not what this country can do for you, but ask what you can do. Ask not what this church can do for you. Ask what you can do for this church. Because check it out, if you come to Calvary and you're just like, I want to know how Calvary can minister to me. All right? All right, that's the consumerism again. And the idea is, check it out, you are the church, which means you are the minister. It's not about what the church can do for you and how the church can minister for you. And by the way, this church can minister to you. You know, trust me, it can minister but you're part of this church just as much as anybody else. And it is expected, commanded in Scripture, that we're all in this together, serving together. So unhealthy churches expect others to do the work and expect others to give money, right? So those are the two pictures. So the question remains, how do we increase the health of Calvary Baptist Church? Again, it's not about how do we get healthy or how do we get from not being unhealthy because you can see it in your own life here at Calvary Baptist Church, all right? Are we healthy? Are we not healthy? You decide. But how do we increase the health? Because I think Calvary Baptist Church is increasingly becoming more and more like Jesus Christ and reflecting his body and his service. So how do we increase that growth? It's easy for anyone to sit back and just look at it and just be like, mm, 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 mm. no, Calvary Baptist Church, uh, it's not healthy. No, let me tell you, let me tell you what's not healthy about Calvary Baptist Church, okay? I don't like the way, right? That's how it always transitions is we're not healthy and it's because I don't like, right? That's how it usually turns, right? So how do we increase the health? Because it's easy for anyone to just sit back and just kind of judge the church for being unhealthy or not liking whatever, but maybe instead of just like talking about what you don't like about Calvary Baptist Church, what if we together became a part of the solution, right? What a novel idea. So um, let me say this in as loving a way as I can, okay? And I, I've talked with uh, Pastor Brian about this, and, and it's just like I want you to understand I'm in this with y'all, okay? We're all in this together. This is a family effort, okay? But I want to share this in a loving way, as lovingly as possible, okay? If, if you've been coming to Calvary for over a year, and you're not regularly financially giving, you're not healthy. You're not healthy. And I love you, and that's why I have to say that. Because if, if the roots aren't going deep and if the faith isn't going deep in God's grace, there's not the growth, okay? It's evident by this little guy right here, okay? So if you've been coming to this church for a year and you're not regularly financially giving, you're not healthy. If, if you're a member of this church and you are not regularly serving in some capacity in this church, you're not healthy. Because it is a scriptural principle that every member is a minister. And if you think that your contribution to Calvary Baptist Church is telling Pastor Brian whether or not you like the music, you're not healthy. Because we are all expected, every member is expected to be a minister. It's not Pastor Brian's job to do your ministry for you. But man, if we get that, if, if we understood that we're all in this, we all have a part, every member has some uh, responsibility in the body of Christ, if we get that, we're going to see some amazing, incredible 
growth. We're going to see incredible things happening. We're going to see, I mean, this church growing in numbers to the point we're going to have to remodel and get some new chairs in here, right? We're going to see people uh, coming and getting saved and being discipled. We're going to be having uh, leaders begging us where they can do something and and lead, and and I'm so excited to have that. And we can see Calvary Baptist Church explode in Grand Prairie, and we can turn this whole city upside down. Listen, listen. And I'm telling you this in another loving way, okay? I love the history that Calvary Baptist Church has. I love the legacy that we have in this city. But I'm telling y'all, if we got this down, if we dug our faith deep, this place would grow like we've never seen it before. This place would explode in growth to a point where we'd be like, I've never seen Calvary Baptist like this before. That's the picture that Paul is painting for us. He's saying this is what you could be like if every single member decided they were a minister. If every single member took responsibility, dug their faith deep. So how are we going to increase the health in this church is when every individual decides that they're going to take responsibility for this church. That they are going to decide that they're not just going to be a consumer, but they are going to be a minister. That they're going to give, that they're going to serve, that they're going to pray for, that they're going to love on, that they're going to lead. That's what this church could be. And I think it's very possible. I think it's, I think it's what Paul wants for Calvary Baptist Church. It's like, it's like an orchestra, okay? If, if an orchestra came together getting ready for a symphony and then all the piccolos were all just like, hey, let's tune together. And so all the piccolos tuned together and they all get tuned, right? And then all of the trumpets were like, hey, we're going to, I don't know if trumpets tune. Trumpets are like, we're going to tune together and they tune together. And then the violins are like, all right, let's tune together. And they all tune together and they all sound great together. But then when it comes time for a symphony, they all play and it's a disaster because they were all tuning to something different, Right? disaster happened. You know, orchestras um, tune to a single instrument. Every time it comes time for symphony, they tune for that very reason. An oboe plays the A, and everyone, I don't know if that was an A or not, everyone tunes to that oboe, right? And so then comes time, and the director throws the first beat, and it creates a symphony right? Because it takes every member tuning to the same note, the same instrument. And when this church has all decided to grow our roots deep into the same soil, when we're tuning to the same instrument, it creates something as beautiful as a symphony. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray, we're going to sing a song, and, uh, But what I want to happen in here is not to just pray, God, would you just help people to wake up in here? Would you help the rest of this church to figure this out? I want you to pray for you, okay? You pray for your faith. Because listen, as long as you're concerned about everyone else's roots, yours are shriveling. As long as you're worried about how deep everyone else is going in the soil, you are remaining unhealthy. So let's get you figure it out. You pray for you. I'm going to pray for me up here. So uh, let's do that. Let's just, as you're seated just right there, the music's going to start playing, and we're just going to pray for our own hearts and then for this body of Christ, Calvary Baptist Church. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us these pictures. We thank you for just making it clear for us, God, of what you want from us. You want us to take that step of faith. You want us to grow our roots deep. You want us to receive life from the soil of your grace. And God, it's going to have to happen for each individual because we're all in this together. This is a family effort here. So I pray that as we are praying, you would speak to each individual heart that we would all tune ourselves to you. And when we've gotten that figured out, we end up tuned together. We love you, God, and we thank you for loving us first. 
And I pray this in your son's precious name. Amen. You